hello so uh, today we are going to discuss about the remaining uh, bonds in brick masonry and that is uh, up to last lecture we have discussed about english bond okay header bond stretcher bond and english bond so today we will discuss in detail about the remaining bonds in brick masonry so first is flemish bond so here uh, just you try to see this elevation here this headers and stretchers that are distributed evenly and creates a better appearance so evenly means in one course first is stretcher second is header stretcher header stretcher header stretcher header like that so each course consists of alternate headers and stretchers ek ch course ma header pan che ane stretcher pan che so it is header stretcher header stretcher header stretcher so in one course they are arranged in alternatively header stretcher header stretcher like that so every alternate course ave alternate course ni baat kariye che means a a che to a alternate che a che to eni sathe a alternate course che so what it is telling every alternate course starts with a header at a corner so here you can see this second course it starts with header at a corner which is known as q and header so corner no je header hoy that is called as the q and header and the clean queen closer and next to that it is a queen closer place next to q and header to develop the face lap so similar to english bond header pachi tamare ek queen closer mukvano aave barabar and the alternate headers of each course so here you can see this header alternate course of each headers they are placed in the center of the stretchers in course below so you can see this this is your stretcher in a center ma tamare a header mukela chhe so this is the general arrangement of flemish bond and in walls that are having thickness equal to odd number of half brick means one and half suppose this here this uh, 3d view is given that is one and half brick thick wall okay so in the wall having thickness equal to odd number of half bricks bats are used okay so here you can see there is a use of brick bat okay so generally one and half brick thick wall two and half brick thick wall normally bats are used here also there is a use of bat okay so there there are wide use of brick bats that are uh, you have to use in particularly flemish bond now in flemish bond they are also divided into two groups flemish bond ma two types pade che one is single flemish bond and second is double flemish bond now you have to understand what is the difference between single flemish bond and double flemish bond bande flemish bond che barabar the ar arrangement is like stretcher header stretcher header like that only but it is based on its appearance on face and back so here you can see uh, here there is a stretcher then header stretcher then header in the back this is your front side okay and here if you look from back at our under ni side internal side here also there is a stretcher header stretcher header okay so here uh, whatever uh, the appearance which is from front side the same appearance if it is on the back side also then it is called as double flemish means banne baju flemish bond jeu arrangement che header stretcher header stretcher while in case of single flemish bond ek baju nu arrangement flemish jeu hase so in the front you will look like it is a flemish bond from, from but, but from inside it will look like a english bond so that is the major difference the double flemish means bande baju thi flemish jeu arrangement that is stretcher header stretcher header stretcher header like that but in case of single flemish bond front you may look like a flemish bond means it's a stretcher header stretcher header but back side it may be having it is having other uh, appearance that is like english bond so uh, now we will discuss in detail both the bonds so as i already told you that single flemish bond it is the combination so single flemish bond it is the combination of english bond and flemish bond okay so in the facing of the wall jab tum bahar thi jane wall ne jo so it will look like a flemish bond and the filling as well as backing consist of english bond in each course so inside it is a english bond but outside it is a flemish bond so here uh, the attempt is made to combine the strength of english bond because this english bond is considered to be the strongest bond and appearance appearance wise flemish bond is considered better so you are combining better appearance of flemish bond and better strength of english bond so here generally it is utilized when the expensive bricks are used for the face work jara apne face work par mongi ito use kariye tyare generally this kind of single flemish bond can be used and in this type of bonding can be adopted for the walls having thickness at least equal to one and half brick thick wall 
so minimum thickness of the wall here it is considered to be one and half brick thick wall so here this one and half brick thick wall in single flemish bond is given okay so here just this is the plan of 1 3 5 cores and this is plan of that is second four and six cores so here you can see there is a queen closer there is a use of three fourth bat okay and here this is stretcher this is header okay then again stretcher again header again stretcher then this is the last ave tere pachu again queen closer just to have a face left and here the alternate course ave tame pachhad na course josho to all our headers here and ena upar no course josho to from facing side it is a flemish bond okay but from backing side here all are stretchers and here you can see in the ena pachhi no jo course che ena upar bada headers mukela che so from back side you can say it is like english bond and from the front side there is a english uh, that flemish bond kind of uh, appearance and here there is a wide use of this 3/4 bat similarly here you are having this two brick thick wall so in the two brick thick wall also you have to you the same thing here uh, again stretcher header stretcher header stretcher header but on the back side all are headers and here on the back side all are stretchers so this is your two brick thick wall okay so here you can say that from front side it will look like a flemish bond but from inside it will look like a english bond so here this breaks in the same course do not break the joint am jo so that ko joint a i ek course na plan ma jo to badha joint continuous che okay so these are the straight joints that are generally obtained in a each course okay each course ma continuous joint hoy che niche but pachi alternate upar jao to that may be having uh, some uh, uh, staggering but in this bond continuous short vertical joints are also formed so you can say that strength wise it is not good as compared to english bond and the brick beds are used for the walls having thickness equal to uneven number of half brick thick je me tamne kidu uneven number to a tamare vadhare brick beds use karva pade as compared to even number of uh, this particular uh, flemish bond okay so here you can say the use of mortar because you are using three fourth bat half bat etc so here use of mortar is more as compared to english bond now uh, next is double flemish bond so here it is double means the both side is it is like flemish means header stretcher okay so header and stretchers are placed alternatively in front and back elevations so here each course presents the same appearance both in front as well as in back so just try to see this uh, isometric view this is your front side and this is your back okay so here it is uh, one brick plus half brick that is one and half brick thick wall एनुज तमारे ऑड कोर्स एंड इवन कोर्स नो तमारे प्लान आप लोगों से बराबर डेट इस डबल फ्लेमिश बॉन्ड सो यू कैन इजीली मेक आउट फ्रॉम दिस थ्रीडी व्यू के कई टाइप नो तमारो पर्टिकुलर प्लान आउट से ओके सो हियर यू कैन सी दिस हाफ बैट्स सो देर इज अ वाइड यूज ऑफ दिस हाफ बैट एंड दिस थ्री फोर्थ बैट एंड दिस इज योर क्वीन क्लोजर okay so half bed and three quarter beds are to be used for the walls having thickness equal to odd number so here it is one and half brick thick wall and for even numbers there are even numbers when we are using half brick means two brick four brick like that uh, uh, the no brick beds will be required and under brick beds need to jaru nahi pade so in in next uh, slide we will see that two brick thick wall okay so in each course alternate header and stretchers are laid so it will give same similar look front and back both side so here in this uh, plan you can see this there is a wide use of this pin closer apart from that there is a use of this 3/4 bat and then uh, one half bat so this type of bonds are economical and present better appearance than the english bond so appearance wise it is said that flemish bond is giving better appearance as compared to english bond but strength wise it is weaker than english bond okay so sometimes it is having a continuous short vertical joints so here uh, you can see this is one brick thick wall double flemish bond okay so here elevation this elevation wise it is same okay so this is plan of 2 4 6 course so here header then queen closer then uh, this uh, stretchers then headers two stretcher headers two stretcher then again queen closer so here we are not using brick beds but when one and half brick thick wall you have to utilize this 3/4 bat okay and here half bat 
here again you are having double flemish bond that is with two brick thick wall so here generally less number of brick beds are used okay so here you can say that this is uh, your plan of two brick thick wall so both the side you are having same the stretcher header stretcher header so similarly on back side also you are having header stretcher header stretcher and use of brick beds and twin closer are to be done at appropriate places at the corners okay just to have the face left so major difference is that it is the appearance on the front and back side if it is same on both side it is double flemish bond and if it is uh, flemish from the front side english from the uh, back side it is called a single flemish bond now I mean sometimes examination difference is asked between english bond and flemish bond so point wise you have to mention each and every point of english bond and flemish bond so these are the all major uh, points that are to be covered so basically as you know this header and stretchers that are laid in alternate course the first course ma header che to second course ma stretcher che pachi pachu header che so it is laid in alternate courses okay while is here flemish bond headers and stretchers are laid alternatively in each course ek as course ma header pan hoy and stretcher par hoy so this is considered to be the strongest type of bond because there is no verticality of joint is observed here in english bond here this is comparatively less strong for the walls having more than 30 cm thick wall appearance wise it is considered to give a rough appearance while here it is giving a good appearance so appearance wise flemish bond is considered better than absence of vertical joints so that will make it strong and here partly continuous vertical joints appear in the structure here special attention is not required for this kind of bond but here special attention am a skilled worker jo hai okay in particular flemish bond so special attention is to be required by supervising the work so progress of work in case of english bond jaldi jaldi kaam kar sako but here bahut bada beds jo hai mortar joint ni thickness pan vadare ho to progress of work is less as compared to english bond so here english bond it is costly and no brick beds are used so whenever we are not using brick beds it will become a costly work while here it is economical as we are using brick beds so as far as skill is concerned skilled labor may not be required in case of formation of english bond while in case of flemish bond you may you have you should have skilled labor because uh, uh, some more art and more skill is required for formation of the flemish bond and as far as mortar is concerned no use of uh, brick beds so less no quantity of mortar is used while here more quantity of mortar is used and the reason is that more use of brick beds also one of the point you can add that in in english bond uh, there are no types here in flemish bond you are having two types that is english and uh, uh, that is single flemish bond and double flemish bond okay so these are all the points that i have covered related to difference between english bond and flemish bond now we will discuss remaining types of bond okay so here next is garden wall bond as the name suggest ke bhai ya to garden ni wall banava mate use thai che okay so that is generally used for the garden wall or some compound wall or some boundary wall so basically bahut vadhare load na avto hoy that particular kind of construction that is done with the help of this garden wall bond so this is uh, this particular wall is generally one brick thick wall and height may be not exceeding 2 meter so you can say it's a small wall okay so this type of uh, bond is no uh, uh, not it's not strong as english bond and it is used for the construction of walls where large stresses does not come so bahut stress aavtu hoy tya to levai nahi so garden wall che compound wall che boundary wall che you can prepare with the help of such kind of bond so this garden wall bond that can be cons uh, constructed either in english bond fashion or flemish bond fashion okay so that is why it is called as english garden wall bond or flemish garden wall bond so arrangement apne ke rite kari che stretcher header nu ena pramane either it in the english bond fashion or flemish bond fashion so garden wall bond can be uh, having this two types depending upon the arrangement so here just try to understand this is english garden wall bond so in this type of bond as the name suggest the bricks are arranged in the fashion of english bond so when we are talking about english bond means ek course ma stretcher hase to bija course ma bada header hase okay so it would be arranged like that but in spite of using alternate course of headers and stretchers 
course of headers kare provide karvano three to five course of stretcher pachi so here just try to see in this elevation this is a header course and then stretcher course so here uh, all are stretcher course stretcher 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 so here you can see this this header bond or this header course it is coming after three stretcher course that is the thing it is not alternatively ke aku ek header no bond pachi stretcher pachi header it's not like that it is like one course of headers after three to five course of stretcher so you can see here there are three courses of stretchers after that again you are having this header course so that is the difference okay and also this queen closer that is the so here this is a queen closer which is placed next to queen header it is similar to your english bond but the only difference is that the uh, header course they are provided after uh, three to five course of stretchers okay so that is english garden wall bond now next is flemish garden wall bond so here as you know its a look should be like a flemish bond so it's a alternate course consist of one header and three or five stretchers so here header stretcher header stretcher it should be like that but here how it is done ek header hoy to ena tron thi panch stretcher so here stretcher 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 then again you are having this header okay so you can say that headers are arranged after three to five stretchers but alternative okay header che stretcher che but it's not header stretcher again it is after three to five stretcher again headers are arranged so that is the different difference okay in arranging it's it, it will give you look like a flemish bond but it is not exactly a flemish bond it is a flemish garden wall bond because header are arranged after 3 to 5 stretchers and each alternate course contains a three quarter bed so here you can see this is your three quarter bed which is placed to quen header q and header etle a corner jo header che ena pachi tamare a brick bed avse three fourth brick bed and again the header is laid then again three to five stretchers are laid then again header okay so this way the arrangement is done now this flemish garden wall is also known as scotch bond or success bond so uh, uh, this type of uh, bond it will give a look like a flemish bond now uh, here uh, there is one kind of bond so in which uh, each course contains one header to two stretchers so you can see there is a one header and two stretchers that if specifically this kind of arrangement is adopted then it is called as monk bond so here in the monk bond uh, this header rests over the joints between the two successive stretchers you can see a tamaru stretcher nu joint che ena upar header ave jare in this case centrally stretcher na center ma tamaru header ave upar nu je bond che tamaru flemish garden wall je scotch bond or success bond success bond che so ena thi a difference che here this header will come on the joint of this two stretchers right here it will be centrally laid over the stretcher that is the arrangement difference but both are the flemish garden wall bond next is racking racking means incline so basically this incline bonds are also used generally a uh, thicker wall hoy so filling it is generally done by headers only and such wall becomes weaker in longitudinal direction so longitudinal direction mein etlu badu ene strength malse nahi so to avoid such thing ke bhai strength bhi sari hovi joye so as a remedial measure inclined bonds are also used but ena mate ekdam thick wall joye because uh, in the thick wall inside you have to provide inclinations okay so racking or inclination should be in opposite direction in alternate course of racking bond so opposite direction ma banne normally adjust karvama aave so successive course of racking bond is generally not, not provided the meaning is that ke racking bond uh, thoda alternate uh, courses arrange thai jaye then after you have to use the meaning is course with racking bond is provided at interval of 4 to 8 course 4 to 8 course apna normal thai jaye then after so you can see this uh, there, there is one course this is another course so after 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 seventh course ma again uh, in between we are using this inclined bond okay so generally it is not used in a successive bond successive course ma racking bond nahi provide karna hota it is generally provided after the regular interval of 4 to 8 course as as per the height in the height of the wall and the racking bond should be provided in stretcher 
course of wall aje bhi inclination part hai generally it is coming on the stretchers okay now there are three types in this racking all are inclined racking no matlab inclined hai barabar so diagonal bond herring bond bond and zigzag bond so generally in paving apne jare brick paving jo hai floor mat hai so there also this kind of uh, uh, bonds are used but in a uh, large thick wall also inclination can be given to this bricks so diagonal bond so here you can see this this is a diagonal bond all are arranged at around 45 degree angle okay so ithe tame jo to almost 45 degree na angle par badi bricks arrange kareli chhe so bricks are laid diagonally and the ang angle of inclination is such that there is a minimum breaking of bricks because you can see uh, always you have to break the bricks okay so minimum breaking tha e pramane generally inclination Uh, uh may be provided and around 45 degree the triangular pieces of the bricks required near the sides are cut to a shape so here whatever triangular pieces that are properly cut which are provided at the sides so these are all the triangular pieces and this bond is best suited for the wall which are 2 to 4 brick thick wall so this is very large okay so that is a very thick wall 2 to 4 uh, brick thick wall and this bond is usually introduced at every Fifth or seventh course along the height of wall. So height of wall ma fifth to seventh course ma this kind of inclination in between you can provide. And in this bond the bricks are placed end to end, end to end in such a way that uh, this extreme corners that will reach to stretchers. Okay, so stretcher na contact ma re every day. Tomorrow you have bricks diagonally. You have to arrange. Okay, so this is diagonally. If you are arranging the brick. and it is called as diagonal bond and which can be provided at uh, generally fifth to sixth course of the height of the particular wall next is herring bond uh, bond so here this herring bond bond you can see ke abit padi diagonally adjust kare li chhe baram but uh, this type of wall is best suited for a very thick wall that is more than four brick thick wall char brick thick wall ki dar madare hoy so it's excessive thickness and this arrangement of the bricks abhi jo normally 45 डिग्री एंगल पर करवा मावे बट इट इज अ सेंटर लाइन तवे पकड़ो सेंटर लाइन थी 45 डिग्री यहां और 45 डिग्री यहां इट्स द डिफरेंस डायगोनली अरेंज बट फ्रॉम द सेंटर लाइन सो यू कैन से द अरेंजमेंट ऑफ द ब्रिक वर्क द ब्रिक्स इज लेड इन कोर्स इंक्लाइन एट 45 डिग्री इन टू डायरेक्शन फ्रॉम दैट सेंटर सो सेंटर थी एक आ डायरेक्शन में और बीजी नीचे ना डायरेक्शन में 45 डिग्री सो 45 डिग्री फ्रॉम हियर 45 डिग्री फ्रॉम हियर सो इट इज अरेंज लाइक दैट and this kind of uh, herring bond bond is also useful for the brick paving so this kind of brick paving you might have seen somewhere ke be opposite direction ma tamari brick arrange kari ne mukeli hoy and also to give the ornamental finish to the face work <coughs> so to give some proper ornamental finish to your face work then this kind of arrangement in elevation you can do or either for brick paving also you can utilize this kind of bond next is zigzag bond so here it is also similar to herring bond bond ek a direction ma hoy to bije a direction ma hoy but the the zigzag fashion the, it's it's exactly as a zigzag fashion and you can give a ornamental finish to your particular elevation to your wall or either for the paved flooring you can utilize so these are the arrangement that are also equally useful for the brick paving okay zigzag fashion or inclined way you are arranging the bricks next is dutch bond so it this bond is the modified form of english bond so you can say okay there are stretchers and th there are headers okay but here uh, in this bond each stretching course so here this you can see this is stretching course jath is stretcher chalu thai che it is it is starting with the three quarter bat as point and the header is placed next to this point so here sauthi pehli shuruaat ma tamaru a uh, a three quarter bed also so here there is a arrangement of three quarter bed okay and then after you have to keep your header and then after you have to start with stretcher course and then after next course all are headers so by slightly arranging this stretcher header and use of beds and closers you can give the different arrangement to your particular bond so here if this kind of arrangement is adopted then it is called as dutch bond next is brick on edge bond okay so here uh, normally apne a brick hoy barabar so normally apne a avi rite mukhe barabar ena bed par mukhe but here generally we are arranging both ways edge par mukhe ane end bed par par mukhe 
so this bond is also known as silver locks bond or soldier's uh, course bond so in this bond the bricks are laid on edge edge means we are just try to understand this particular arrangement aaj je tumne 3d view je dekhai che just try to understand in this bond the bricks are laid as headers and stretchers in alternate course so you can see ke first course che all are headers so what the header che so it is giving look like a uh, which bond that is english bond and next is all are stretchers all are stretcher all are stretcher but how they are arranged that is the thing okay so here it is said that arranged in such a way that headers are laid on bed so you can see a to apne normally je vite header muke che e bi je tena bed par j muke lu chu baram but this particular stretchers jare apne stretcher ne muke che to ene ubhu kari ne muke che so it is not laid on its bed but it is laid on its edge ene dhar par muke lu che so it will look like this okay so here this way it is arranged and vache ni jagya khali rakhi che so that will create a cavity so generally cavity wall construction if you are not filling something inside and if you want to fill koi biju material bhi bhare sako but if the cavity is formed by arranging this kind of bricks and twin closure is generally provided after co and header so that is normal way so just to bring the overlap and uh, as uh, it is having uh, cavity is less number of bricks and mortar are used it is economical and uh, strength wise if you consider it is not so strong so that can be utilized for uh, compound wall garden wall or partition wall so this kind of cavity may be there in between so you can say uh, you are arranging some bricks on edge and uh, some on bed okay and some cavity is formed so that is called as a silver locks bond next is uh, so here also uh, uh, this uh, red trap bond it is also like useful for the cavity cavity formation matter okay but its look is like a flemish bond so this bond gives same appearance as a flemish bond so you can say one stretcher then next is header so here actually uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, this uh, actual view of this uh, wall you can say that is made with the red trap bond so ahi yeah, tumne dekha hai ki why it is called as a red trap so whatever voids and under ek under aavi ne rakh sake a type ni cavity form thai che but here all the bricks all are laid on edges only edge par ad badhi mukvam aave che stretcher hoy ke header hoy so here in bond all bricks are laid on their edges so you can say uh, as this particular stretcher this is all uh, this is arranged on its edge so here you can see this is on edge so here this stretcher course it is on edge this header course it is also on edge and in between you are having this cavity so this bond uses less number of bricks as compared to conventional technique that's why it is also providing a thermal insulation temperature wise aqueous disconnection thai ja due to this cavity and that's why thermal insulation is better uh, due to voids in between okay so this kind of uh, special requirement where the cavity is required you can use silver lock bonds or red trap bond next is english cross bond so here is also called as st andrews cross bond so this bond is also modified form of english bond used to improve the appearance of wall so it is considered ke be english bond to rough appearance aap jaise thodu ke if you want to improve you can use this modified uh, form of english cross bond so it is consisting of alternate course of header and stretcher similar okay ke by stretcher but here uh, in this bond twin closures are placed next to q and holders in each header course so similar arrangement a header course je che ema pehla tamaru q and header che then twin closures che and all are headers and in each stretching course when we are talking about stretching course so this is the stretcher course header is placed next to q and stretcher q and stretcher means je corner no stretcher che so corner no stretcher pachi ek header mukvam aave okay and then after all are stretchers so it looks like a english bond only but with slight modification in stretching course one header is used okay after one q and stretcher and this bond is sufficiently strong and also it gives a good elevation so here only the difference is that in the stretcher course the normally header pachi twin closure and all are header that you are knowing but here in stretcher course the coin stretcher hoy after that one header is put and then after again all stretchers are used so that is, this is the only slight uh, slight minor difference that is done in the formation of english bond that is what is called as the english cross bond it's a modified form next is facing bond 
so in this bond a header course is provided after several stretcher course so here you can see 1 2 3 4 5 5 stretcher course pachi aapko header no course provide karna hai okay so this is giving you a different facing and this type of bond is used where the bricks of different sizes are to be used to wo badi size ni brick tamari use karvi hoy facing and backing ma so this kind of facing bond can be used and if you want to use expensive and you could you want to give a good uh, elevation to your facing then this kind of facing bond can be utilized and it is desired to economize the facing bond so jare tamare economy joiti hoy ke pachad gamme te bhi big brick use karo par facing saru dekhavo joye so in that case you can utilize this kind of facing bond but structurally it is not good because you are using different sizes of bricks and only this face facing it is good and uh, distribution of load is also not uniform but uh, from uh, this uh, front side if you look it will give you a good appearance so if uh, such kind of uh, conditions are there you, you want to give a good facing uh, then in that case you can utilize this kind of facing bond so header course can be provided after several stretcher course and behind that you can utilize different sizes of brick and you can arrange that way so here in uh, masonry <coughs> Uh, the different joints are there okay so you you should just try to understand uh, which type of joints uh, that are possible so there are two types of joint vertical joint and horizontal joint okay so this vertical joint it is called as perpend and this horizontal joint it is called as bed joint so uh, different there are different ways in which you can arrange this particular joints so these are the different joints mortar joints in masonry so first is weathered mortar joint So in the weathered mortar joint, this kind of inclination is given, okay, for joining the two bricks. Next is struck mortar joint. I am upon a huge inclination, hoy, but the direction of inclination is slightly different than the weathered joint. Next is racked joint. So this racked joint, it is also provided with this particular kind of straight line. Next is concave joint. So concave joint, ma, the maru arrangement a type ni hoy, like this. so it would be a concave joint so like this concave is arranged like this then v joint so here it is arranged in the form of v so jointing is done in the form of v then flushed joint so flushed joint so flushing karwa so khabar na pade kya joint hai so it's a flush with this particular brick then extruded joint extruded joint means it's a extended part so it is extended from your particular brick so these are the different ways how you can uh, utilize different uh, mortar joints in masonry construction now uh, some of the defects that also you should uh, know for the brick masonry that is uh, related to uh, some aspects so first is corrosion of embedded fixtures because masonry ma tumhari paase ghana bada iron and steel fixtures uh, like pipes Uh, then hold fast of your uh, doors etc are also there so these are all steel fixtures so which are embedded in your masonry and they may got corroded due to dampness so bhejne karane e bada corrode thai jaye okay and this metal expands in uh, volume te pachi no expansion thase due to corrosion and it may lead to crack so to avoid uh, such uh, corrosion of the embedded fixtures of metal uh, it is uh, avoided by embedding uh, this particular uh, uh, fixtures in dense mortar with a cover of 15 to 25 mm so generally uh, our uh, joint thickness uh, is generally 10 mm but here in this case particular case whenever such uh, fixtures are to be arranged more mortar is to be used with a cover of 15 to 25 mm the next is sulfate attack so this is also a very uh, bad thing that may happen so sulfate salt uh, in the brick work it may also react with the alumina content which is present in cement or lime so cement or lime with uh, major content is alumina so when it react with uh, such sulfate uh, salts it may cause considerable increase in the volume of mortar volume of mortar vadhi jase and that may result in chipping and swelling of bricks means very the age thi na surface thi badi tamari bricks chutti padva manse okay and uh, that may uh, develop cracks in the joints so this sulfate attack this defect occur when the brick work is exposed like boundary wall or parapet wall okay so uh, this sulfate attack uh, for that you have to use proper quality of brick okay next is crystallization of salt from brick so when bricks contain excessive soluble salts soluble salts madare it comes in contact with water 
and this soluble salts it get dissolved in whitish crystal which uh, i have already explained you that is afterwards so this phenomena of that white patches ye tumhara brief wall par dekha hai that is called as the efflorescence and this may be due to this crystallization of the salt which is from the crack reacting with the water so the white patches ye dekha hai tumhara brief na that should not happen so good quality brick work has to, uh, brick has to be adopted next is shrinkage on drying normally what happens in the brick masonry uh, when we are adding water so it will absorb water so it will swell if fully just say and it will shrink when it, there is a water evaporation evaporation thai water mo to a shrink thai aur jara water add kari hai to absorb kare to it swells thai so this shrinkage that may result in cracks so cracks may develop jara shrink tha se so this defect can be minimized by using a good quality brick and uh, uh, this uh, protecting this moisture uh, this masonry from the moisture penetration so good quality brick if you are using and for sufficient time you are uh, applied for uh, absorbent uh, to absorb the water before uh, starting of your work you can avoid such kind of defects now there are general principles for the brick masonry that you should use uh, you should know while supervising the brick work so first thing brick should be thoroughly soaked in clear water before use so uh, it will it, it, it should absorb maximum water so uh, whenever we are using mortar and no pani absorb okay so sufficient time you have to soak in water before starting of your work then the brick should be laid on full bed of the mortar so jara mortar apne lay kar de ena upar tamare brick mukwani ene thodi slightly press karvani into the bed mortar to ensure the proper adhesion so properly ene upar ena par chont bhi jo ena mate jara bhi mortar nu bed ho ena par tamare thodi press karo and then after you to start laying and jointing the, all the joint should be properly flushed and filled with the mortar so proper jointing is very essential and no cavity should left out between the two joints of brick in case of walls having thickness of two brick or more the joint should be filled at every course in addition to bedding and flushing with mortar jare be brick thik thi vadare wall leta hoy tyare joints ma tamare bahu dhyan rakhu pade ke it should be filled at every course in addition to bedding and flushing joint kata proper tamare enu thickness mate proper jointing is essential brick beds are not essentially used it should not be avoided as far as possible except in case you are getting a particular specific bond so you know that in case of flemish bond we have to use brick beds so otherwise uh, this brick bed should be discouraged brick work is generally done is english bond and proper bond should be maintained throughout the work so this proper bonding and what uh, that uh, uh, this continuity of the joint in successive course has to be maintained then good quality specified mortar is to be used and joints in no case should be more than 15 mm so mortar joint that should be good uh, specific mortar you to use that is as per specification and brick work should be kept wet for at least 7 to 14 days ek bar kaam pati jaye pachi na the proper pani aapvano hoy because we have to start with the plastering and this plastering should be done after about 28 days of completion of masonry masonry work tumar pati jaye na 28 divas pachi tumare tumaru brick plaster work chalu thai okay so a half brick partition wall it should be reinforced if you are using half brick partition wall so it is not having a good strength so if you want to attain certain good strength then you have to use reinforcement bar okay and which are placed at every fourth course of brick work so generally in half brick partition wall you can use the reinforcement bar at every fourth course to bring certain strength to your particular half brick thick wall so these are some of the general principles that are to be followed for brick masonry Uh, so we have uh, understood both the types of masonry up till now that is stone and brick so sometimes in examination the difference is also asked between the stone masonry and uh, brick masonry so you should know clear cut difference uh, between the certain points so first is material so as you know stone masonry it's a natural material for the construction which is obtained from the quarry and as per requirement you are doing dressing etc but it's a natural material of construction while in case of brick masonry it is man made material which is manufactured by proper molding burning etc in the factory so it's a factory made while here it is also you have to give some dressing but it's a basically a natural material as far as strength is concerned um, stone masonry is having very high strength as compared to brick masonry dressing so that to give the proper size and shape as per requirement so here dressing is essential 
because uh, in very uh, minor entry and uh, quality of uh, construction of stone masonry in which you can utilize directly from the quarry but here dressing is required to bring the stones to a required shape and size so here in case of brick masonry there is no need to of breaking uh, sorry no need of dressing because bricks are generally molded and desired shape and size are given in factory itself so here no dressing is required next is as far as appearance is concerned no external treatment is required <coughs> stone masonry in a koji as apne plaster ke upar hona pade but in case of this plastering is required to give a good appearance <coughs> then durability wise stone masonry is considered to be excellent excellent in uh, durability as compared to our brick masonry work then bonding uh, uh, by proper jointing you provide proper bond so it is very difficult to provide a required bond in stone masonry while here as it is having specific size and shape and it is easy to provide the required bond so there are many types of bonds that we have seen so it is easy to provide a specific type of bond then skill and care high level of skill is required stone work jare bhi karu hoy high skill for labor work is required and great care is required in construction while in case of brick masonry it is uh, this less experience or less expertise in the ordinary labor can also use this particular brick masonry then lifting and laying here you know that uh, for the very heavy stone you need some lifting mechanism so it is inconvenient to handle while in case of brick masonry it is very convenient labor aram thi and use kar sake and it can uh, they can bring and they can lift and they can place at a particular place as far as mortar is concerned reach and great quality of mortar is required while in case of brick masonry moderate strength and lesser quantity of mortar is required so yeah vadhare quantity bhi joiye and quality bhi sari joiye yeah quality quantity ochi hase to pan chalse then this thickness and continuity of mortar joints so generally any uh, yeah, thickness of mortar joint is more and irregular and it may be continuous in certain cases while here the thickness of mortar joint is less it is uniform and seldom continuous generally we avoid that continuous vertical joint in successive pour so we try to maintain that uh, staggerness in the joint and we can maintain it properly as far as the danger from the dampness is concerned moisture wagera so any yeah, itlu bathu problem na thai but here there is a problem related to this dampness that is moisture related problems then fire resistance it is considered that stone is less fire resistant as compared to brick so brick work it is more uh, fire resistant as compared to stone work cost wise stone masonry is considered to be costly as compared to brick work and uses uh, <clears throat> all these piers and dams and residential area generally uh, the stone masonry used and similarly this residential and public building so most of the work that can be done with the help of brick masonry and uh, where the stone is available cheaply and widely you can utilize stone masonry as well so with this i would like to finish my uh, this particular lecture so thank you very much